Yeah, today we're talking about the fibromyalgia, my passion to this disease. I treated patients with fibromyalgia for more than 25 years. And uh, uh, basically, I, uh, I have more than 2,000, 3,000 patients currently. And over years, I have more than that. And I have a lot of publications. And I have a big passion to this disease. And uh, let's talk about it. So that's exactly our life. Patients stand at front of us, full of pain, fatigue, tiredness, and he, the doctor tell him, everything is normal. Your lab is normal. Your x-ray is normal. MRI is normal. You are a picture of health. I don't think you are sick. And that's fibromyalgia. Patient is suffering, and doctor don't see anything. So it's common disease. It's around 20% populations. So in the literature saying that it may be 6%, the reality is not. It's more than that. Almost 14 to 20% of rheumatology visits and 8% population, but maybe more than that, and 5% in internal medicine visit. So you, you're going to see these patients anyway as doctors, and it's a big numbers of patients. So it's a new disease. It's not old. And it started 1990 when we start know it by American College of Rheumatology and address the disease. But long time ago, patients suffering. I used to have patients before that. They told me that I used to go everywhere in the wallet, even England and everywhere, and they don't know what they have. And they call it uh, uh, like fibrothitis, maybe uh, like, uh, uh, like inflammations of the muscles and maybe a sleep problem, maybe psychological problem. And patient keep from one place to others to find a name. And then finally, in 1981, they call it fibromyalgia. And then criteria came after that, 1990, American College of Rheumatology. And then 2010, start to get revised, like ACR criteria, EOLR 216. And then we start having a full clue about the disease. So it is tough because it's at patients, actually, we don't know what it is before for a long time. So diagnosis of fibromyalgia is widespread pain, pain in the body more than three months, and the tenderness of 11 out of 18 points. It, this is what we see. Actually, the word fibromyalgia is wrong. Because fibro means fibrous tissue, scar tissue. Myalgia means muscles. It has nothing to do with the muscle, has nothing to do with the scar tissue. So it was a wrong name too, up till now. And the diagnosis, we don't need to have the trigger point to have a diagnosis. And this is a trigger point. It's 18 trigger point, four at front of the neck and, and six in the back. So 10 around the neck area and lower back around four like uh, in the back of lower back and two in the knees, so area. So basically, and two in the elbows. So that's a trigger point. So basically, the modification make a difference, which what we see recently is basically it is, it's not just a trigger point. It's pain that can comes and goes and can be like any kind of form of pain, it's all over the body, it's not one area. So my patient tell me, doctors, it is, I have pain from head to toe, from my hair all the way to, to my leg. It's everywhere. But you have to have fatigue, problem of uh, waking unrefreshed in the morning, which is tiredness. Feel like truck hit me, doctor, in the morning. Cognitive, which is memory problem. Fogginess, it's a major problem, fibromyalgia, which is patient cannot sometimes know where they are. They forgot something. They've got names. It affects their work. Plus, numbers of other general physical symptoms, like you can have headache and jaw pain and chest pain. We're talking about that more. And then you have, and this symptom has to be for three months and no any other health problem. So doctor has to exclude any other problem. So it is affecting the, 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 uh, the health care because this patient can go from hospital to hospital to find the problem. So he can get chest pain, go to emergency room for heart problem, end up being nothing. And then go to headache, maybe a bleeding or tumor, end up being nothing. Abdominal pain, IBS, irritable bowel syndrome, 
has nothing, get a colonoscopy, more even surgery, more of this. It takes sometimes years and years to get diagnosis, especially in the area that's not doctors, not familiar with the disease, or some countries, they have a problem of diagnosing fibromyalgia. They call it maybe rheumatoid or any other disease, and, and that's, that's a problem. And that's utilized the healthcare and cost a lot of money. So we, we have, this is very important, the tenderness is global. It's all over the body. So every place you put your fingers on hurts. And that's a point. It's not just a trigger point. And let me tell you, patient will have good days and bad days. So sometimes patient come to the office, has a good day, sunny day, no stress, slept well at night, and has no much of trigger point. But this patient can be a few days after that has a trigger point. So basically, pain is not localized to one area. It's all over the body. Pain can be wax and wane. Okay, pain can be good and bad days. That's an important. It can flare all of a sudden. And what's bringing the flare is menstrual cycles, maybe upper respiratory tract infections, flu, cold, rainy weather, job or family stress, level of activity. If you overdo it, you get punished for it. And that's a problem sometimes. So that's kind of pain. And patient complain, every place is hurt. Doctors, I feel like a flu without the symptoms of flu. Doctors, I feel like I'm tired all the time from head to, I feel like a truck hit me in the morning. I'm unrefreshed. I slept 12 hours and I wake up in the morning, feel like I didn't sleep a minute. What's happening? That's typical what fibromyalgia pain is. So other complaint, and anxiety, tension, headache, numbness, tingling. We do EMGs, normal. Dizziness, vertigo. Irritable bowel syndrome, IPS, bloating, cramps, rectal spasm, abdominal pain, constipation or diarrhea, sometimes more constipation, pelvic pain, and that's an important, pain during menstrual cycle, pain during intercourse, it affects the quality of life and affects also the family life. Frequency, urgency of urine, we call it interstitial cystitis. And I one time I went to see a urologist who showed me the, the bladders of a fibromyalgia patient full of raw area with bloody area inside. So it's not in their head. It's a real disease causing problems. Dry eyes and dry mouth, cold blue hands, we call it Raynaud's, and feeling cold hands can happen a lot. Short memory loss, mood change that affecting them very bad. And that's affect. So the patient told me I'm. I'm always in bad mood at home, fighting with my kids and husband and stuff. That's fibromyalgia. Weight fluctuations, night sweats, palpitation, and, and that's sometimes hypotension, allergy to multiple chemicals, and that's another problem. Patients, even perfumes can flare their fibromyalgia. Even smell, even anything like that. That's what fibromyalgia is. You see a lot of symptoms. It affects everywhere in the body and the quality of life. That's very difficult disease. And sometimes symptoms make it difficult to diagnose and delay in diagnosis. As we know, it's more common in women than men and like big numbers. But men has fibromyalgia. The difference, men, men sometimes don't have much of trigger point, but they have back pain and other symptoms show it and all this. But women definitely more than men in this disease. This is mainly women, as we see. So it's pain, have pain all over the body that make you cannot sleep at night. So you toss and turns at night and you don't get to deep sleep and then take you to more like like depression and and fatigue so it's a triad of cycles of pain fatigue lack of sleep together and that's a problem so you live in cycle of pain i'm in pain cannot sleep more fatigue more depressed and runs day and day this way and to treat that you have to get out of this cycle so actually here patient is busy going from doctor to doctors. It's good to psychiatrist because of psychology problem, mood swings and all these things. Depression has treated 40% of patients as depression. They go to gastroenterologist to get in uh, colonoscopy, have a rhythm bowel syndrome. He thinks that maybe I have Crohn's, maybe I have nothing. Everything is normal. Go to gynecologist for PMS, pelvic pain, 
and and that's severe pain during menstrual cycles, severe pain during intercourse affecting the life, and and that is sometimes a problem, valvodynia, and all these things. Sometimes this is the only presentation patient come to me with, and that's the main reason. And also, uh, uh, they have cardiologist. They go for chest pain, costochondritis pain in the chest muscle here, and it's they think it's heart attack. They go to rheumatologist to diagnose them, neurologist actually to see if chronic headache and neuropathy and all these things, and otolaryngitis for TMJ, ENT doctors. So basically, patients are here uh, uh, like going to multiple doctors. So again, it's widespread pain, pain all over the body from head to toe, and its pain include aching and exhausting pain, nagging pain, hurting, and tenderness. On, and stiffness, tender points, stiff all over the body, muscle cramps, and it, tenderness mainly with more when during changes weathers and heat, cold, electrical pain, kind of, and morning stiffness in the morning, and that makes you to mood disorders, cognitive difficulties, fogginess, and anxiety, depression. And all these things. And sleep disturbance, which is the main reason of fibromyalgia. If we can correct the sleep, we're going to correct most of fibromyalgia patients. And they have a problem to get in sleep. Problem to maintain sleeping. So wake up at 3 o'clock and couldn't sleep back again. Or stay until 3 o'clock, couldn't sleep. And that's what we see lacking of stage 4 of sleep. And the most important, fatigue, tiredness. And that's a problem. It's an overlap with multiple disease. And, and basically, fibromyalgia patients, they come with chronic fatigue syndrome. They come multiple chemical sensitivity. And I, I have patients, actually, I had patients, one time I give him very, very low dose amitriptyline, knock him down 10 milligram, knock him down for like almost three days. And that's actually can, the dose for pediatric for kids. So, and he's a big guy, like 300 pounds. It's like I couldn't believe that until they are have chemical sensitivity. So it's sensitive to most of medicine sometimes. And they have sensitivity to chemical, to the smell of anything. And even exposure to fungus, to anything in the wall, like thick building, lead in the wall, or fungus in the wall, or silicon breast implant. So silicon breast implant causing problem long time. And now it's mainly saline, but it can cause some aches and pain of fibromyalgia, Gulf War illness, and all these things. Things, chronic fatigue. So it is in actually going uh, like uh, 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 like to, to be multiple problem this way. So five malja is have always a sleep problem which is basically uh, like we see uh, like patient difficult to get in like sleep, starting sleep, or patient difficult to maintain sleep. And we calling is problem in the stage four, uh, uh, like sleeping problem. And that's, that's how it is. So it's essential for diagnosis. So when you have fibromyalgia, you're going from doctor to doctors and you did not get diagnosed, that's a problem. Because this can lead us to patients is like getting an anxiety, what I have, I may have cancer, I may have this. But at the end, once you get diagnosed, 50% of improvement. When you have a disease, that's what I have, and I'm working on it. And they found that improvement by just diagnosis. And you have to know diagnosis is by exclusion. You have to exclude other disease. So when patients come to my office for, for, for with fibromyalgia, first visit is important. I have to confirm the disease. She has trigger point and all symptom of fibromyalgia, but also I have to rule out any other disease. I have to rule out rheumatoid, lupus. I have to rule out uh, like any kind of something called uh, non-radiographic spondyloarthropathy back problem. And uh, basically uh, that's the problem in, in uh, like in lower back and inflammation. That's common misdiagnosed with fibromyalgia. I'm writing an article about that and that's important. And we have to to exclude thyroid problem, 
We have to exclude gluten sensitivity problem. We have to exclude vitamin deficiency, magnesium, vitamin D, B12 deficiency, absorption. You have to exclude any other disease. And sometimes we end up to be doing more tests to just to be sure that only patient has fibromyalgia, just what it is, and confirming diagnosis. And we'll give the patient diagnosis based on that. So what is here? So is it your head in your head or it's a real disease? It is a real disease. So what causes fibromyalgia? Number one, genetics. And genes is important here. And I did a study a long time ago with City of Hope here in California to find the genes of, for some fibromyalgia. And we find serotonin genes and, and other genes, and even familial Mediterranean genes, which is FMF. Some, some people like have that. So we see more fibromyalgia in some Middle Eastern because FMF kind of positive genes, they have, they have the gene, not the disease, which for me, a Mediterranean fever, and they can have the genes. So there's a lot of genes of fibromyalgia. But we don't, up to now, we don't have one gene we can test. It. So that's why we don't have a test for fibromyalgia. We have a trigger. Something has to trigger. So to have any disease, you have to have a gene and something trigger it. Trigger can be anything. Comes from viral infections, from chemicals, exposures, from stress. I have patient develop fibromyalgia after, like, husband died, and next week develop fibromyalgia, and, uh, like, car accident. Anything can happen. Anything, just trigger it. And we don't go back to silicone implants. Something to has to trigger that. And we don't go after trigger. Once it happens, that's it, done. The disease is started, pain, sleeping problem, fatigue. So we go after the, and, and the disease itself, not that. And then we have to have mechanism of action that we're talking about right now. It is central pain. is not a peripheral pain. It's not a muscle pain. It is central pain. That's actually one of publication we had recently in 2022, this year in February. Very interesting. We find COVID patient, COVID-19, like making a disease, post-COVID syndrome, that's almost the same. It is fibromyalgia. It is causing fibromyalgia, which is fine that these patients who have COVID-19, they develop long-term post-viral syndrome. And this causing fatigue, brain fog which is a problem sometimes. And this syndrome can take a long time and can stay for longer time and can trigger the disease and can cause cytokines. This cytokine can go all the way to the brain. We call it myalgia encephalomyelitis. And in this article, very interesting article, I, I published this article, shows not only that COVID can cause other diseases, can cause lupus, can cause rheumatoid, jogren, can cause a lot of flaring the disease already. So, but the very interesting part of fibromyalgia, and that's based on our patient the clinic. So fibromyalgia is a central pain problem, which is mean what? When, when somebody get pressure stimuli here, go all the way, and that's what we see here, all the way, go to the brain, and it tells the brain it's a problem happening. And then brain give another stimuli, go back, and tell the nerves, yes, respond to this by pain like suppress the pain. We call it central pain. During this process, there is a lot of chemicals going on, which is substance P, a lot of chemicals. So it is a nerve or central pain disease with chemicals in the nerve ending that causing the pain. And that's what we see for fibromyalgia. Okay, so it is not muscle. It is not scar tissue. It is more than that. So another thing that we sometimes done in academic institutions to see if it's a real pain or not, if they bring patient of fibromyalgia and patient has no fibromyalgia and the patient has fibromyalgia, they do pressure on the neck here, exactly what we do trigger point. And they found that they do something called functional MRI. And this function MRI, they found that lighting up in the brain, lighting up in certain area, in codate, uh, like some areas in the brain. And this lighting up here, it did not show in normal people. So it tell you it's a cortical and subcortical areas here. And it tell you it is not in your head. It is not a disease that maybe you fake it. It is a real disease. It causing problem. It causes stimulations in the brain when somebody gets certain stimuli. And then they did something. Let's do that. They did they got like patients, put the needle in the spine, and they get the fluid out. And actually, 
and they looked to this fluid, they found substance P, which is basically uh, like uh, inflammatory and pain, like uh, uh, like substance that can increase in fibromyalgia patient. So in fibromyalgia patient, this is the one has a lot of substance B, regular patient, not much of substance B. And I actually, I met this doctor, Dr. Russell, and we talking together about that. And he's the one who convinced me about that this long time ago. He told, that's why I have some interest in it based on my, I have a dinner with him long time ago. And he told me, take care of this patient. It's a tough disease. Take, it's a very difficult to treat. And at, at that time, we don't know much about it, other than it's real something going on with people. <laughs> then recently, I have a very interesting article, which I'm very proud of it, which is I published it in Current Rheumatology Review. And I look to myself after 25 years taking care of these patients. Is every patient the same? Is it the disease of everyone the same? I found that that's not happening. Everyone different. Everyone present in different way. And that's the point. It is, it's a disease, it's not one disease. So you cannot treat with one medication. You cannot treat with one thing. So everyone completely different. Out of 2,000 patients I have in my office, no one almost the same out of them. So I found that we can categorizing them. There is some called primary fibromyalgia, which a patient clean fibromyalgia. Young ladies come with trigger point, fatigue, sleeping problem, no any underlying problem, beautiful, no problem other than just fibromyalgia. Simple called primary fibromyalgia. Then second category is called secondary fibromyalgia. There is underlying problem going on here that causing the patient hurting, which can be as rheumatoid, she may have lupus, she may have this ankylosed bondylitis, we call it, or inflammatory axial arthritis in the back, causing the pain, and then develop fibromyalgia after. So they can have uh, like Jogren syndrome, dry mouth and dry eye syndrome that can cause fibromyalgia. They can have like um, gluten sensitivity causing fibromyalgia. They can have MS, multiple sclerosis causing fibromyalgia. So that's why we need to check the secondaries. And then juvenile fibromyalgia, kid fibromyalgia. This is another category, third one, which is kids two years old and above. I What makes me convinced about the disease, when I see patient five years old have severe fibromyalgia, how come these kids will fake the disease? No way. Severe pain, crying from pain. It looks like maybe something major, maybe arthritis, maybe cancers. And they end up to be just fibromyalgia. So that make me, and this is, I see a lot of more than 150 kids in my office with fibromyalgia. Okay, now the fourth category, there is something called neuroendocrine fibromyalgia. We call it POT syndrome. This is the worst fibromyalgia, which this patient has hypotension, like tachycardias, has a lot of GI problem, and very difficult and not treated easy. You need a center to treat them and multidisciplinary centers. And then they have a problem in sympathetic pathway in the body. And then we have hormonal fibromyalgia, which is basically, this is a woman like, uh, like postmenopausal, and she lost a lot of hormone, including testosterone hormone or estrogen. Once we try to replace or Cushing syndrome, it's like this kind of uh, uh, like uh, steroid hormone or anything like that. And these patients, once you replace the hormonal therapy, it makes difference. And sometimes we end up be tending to get billets of testosterone to do that. And then we have neuropathic fibromyalgia. The patient comes with fibromyalgia, but mainly nerve problem, numbness, tingling all over the body. And then we did a biopsy for the nerve, for the skin, and we found this patient has small fiber neuropathy, which is a disease that causes nerve problem, and that can be treated that you treat fibromyalgia. So that's another one. Then psychiatric fibromyalgia, which is patient has every, most of patient fibro depressed, but sometimes depressions and manic is major problem. You have to focus on this. So not every fibromyalgia is the same. That's my question. And my question to other doctors, you have to treat every patient differently and you cannot treat all of them the same way. So how can we manage fibromyalgia? Let me tell you. In my own experience, which I'm like uh, academic and same time I'm uh, doctors for communities. So I based all my information on real life patients, which I think is more important than just reading articles and that. Uh, yeah, we still read because I teach at USC, but at the same time, I think patience is a good teacher. Patient during over experience of 25 years of experience is the one who 
tell me about the disease. So let me tell you my honest experience at the end. 70% of treatment of fibromyalgia based on patient, not the doctors. And 70% of improvement come from change lifestyle. If the patient does not want to change lifestyle, he will never do well. So don't expect doctors going to give you a bell and make you feel well. Do not expect magic bell and a magic doctors because there is nothing called magic doctor in fibromyalgia. There's nothing called magic bell. There's called magic patient, the patient who can take care of himself. So if patient does not want to walk half an hour per day, he will never do well. Walking is a treatment, is not walking is kind of luxury here. So it's very important changing lifestyle. And how can we do that? I will tell you my magic five point. Number one, keep moving. Walking in a fresh air, aerobic exercise is number one treatment. But don't overdo it. That's the second one. So because you overdo it, you have a good day. Today's Saturday, beautiful sunny outside. You run around a lot. You do a lot of errands, have a big party. You're going to be three, four weeks tired. So you have to understand your body. So don't overdo it. It comes to the third one, eating healthy. There is some food we're talking about right now. It's called inflammatory food. Foods that you can eat that can make fires inside you, which is carbohydrates, sweets, caffeine, too much of these things that cause a problem. And there is some other food called anti-inflammatory food. So you have to be wise in the food, what you eat. Okay, maybe gluten, like the free diet for people who have gluten problem, which mostly a lot of fibromyalgia. So that's an important thing. Number four, try to relax yourself. Cognitive behavior, relaxation therapy, biofeedback, yoga, that's a treatment by itself. If you don't know how to do all this, sit in your own recliners at night and take a deep breath in and out. And that will make a difference. Number five, which is the most important one, how to sleep well. Sleeping is an important part of treatment of fibromyalgia. You have to have a good sleeping hygiene. You have to have a time to sleep. Don't look to your, your like TV or iPhones while you go, go in bed. You have to have drink something to eat tea, hibiscus tea, or or. important about that, okay? And we have treatment, pharmacological treatment, which is antidepressant and analgesic and anticonvulsant, which we're talking about it right now. And that we have actually here, like um, complementary and alternative therapy, we have some evidence of myofascial relief therapy, that's uh, like, uh, which is sometimes massaging and everything, acupuncture work. Acupuncture work for five months if you have somebody do it well. Turmeric work fine. I always give turmeric, magnesium, CQ10. This stuff will work fine. Well, I finish it, it may work, may not. We have something called Meyer cocktail, which is vitamins and magnesium and calcium gluconate. It may help. Trigger point injections will help. Chiropractors manipulations can help, but don't overdo it. Massage can be a problem sometime if it is spa is good and biofeedback bio relaxation therapy is important. So we have the diet. We have diet and fibromyalgia. We have anti-inflammatory diet. We're talking about that very important. I'm writing an article right now. Going to be a wonderful article about food and fibromyalgia which is less carbohydrate, less sweets, and less caffeines, and more fruits, more pro vegetable, more protein. So you can make your own smoothie in the morning. That makes a difference. Like put like green salaries, and you put some berries and antioxidant, and put turmeric, and put some protein and, and protein shakes or yogurt, Greek yogurt or anything like that. And you can add like vitamin C and like orange or anything like that make a difference. Gluten-free diet helps for a lot of patients. Antioxidant diet is important sometimes, which is sometimes the berries and other things. Mineral and supplement for five months you're talking about magnesium help cq10 help vitamin d can help you know and also b12 if deficiency microbiome in fibromyalgia microbiome is big thing now it's a bacteria that sometimes we kill it by taking too much antibiotic and sometimes we take something to help us in fibromyalgia like uh, like uh, any things like uh, uh, that helping microbiome like yeast and 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 uh, uh, and and yogurt and all these things. Weight loss, 
Five weight loss is the most important things in fibromyalgia, which is all the fats is kind of inflammatory, and we call it leptins. I have an article before about leptin levels causing inflammation in the body, and losing weight will make a big difference, decrease the C-reactive protein, inflammation markers, and others. So that's a program I made in Casa Colina, which is an, a hostel closer to me here, rehab hostel. When I start my work in five miles, I said, let me do something different. Let's do this kind of uh, like work together to help. We have like, um, like this is education, this is pool therapy, this is acupunctures, all it can be in one place, biofeedback, stretching, massaging, light massage, and yoga. This stuff may help a lot. So we have my official trigger point injections can help for some patient, can be not for others. You can tell it's, it is, but I have patients do wonderful, maybe two to three weeks, give shots of lidocaine, it make a difference. So what treatment approved for that for now? We have Lyrica. Lyrica is the oldest drug approved for fibromyalgia. I like Lyrica only at night. I always start slow, I start low and go slow. So we give you like, sometimes 75 milligram will be a lot. You give it 25 milligram or 50 and it goes slowly up. You can go up to 450 milligram sometimes. Simpalta, which is antidepressant drug, duloxetin work fine. So we have brigabalin, duloxetin here, it's fine. You can add this together, but you can't add Savala and Simpalta, Milnasopram, and that's actually another one. In Europe, they're using a lot, Savala with Lerica, here Simpalta, Lerica, and Savala sometimes, and that's an important. This is the only three medication approved for fibromyalgia. The problem about this disease is polypharmacy. Patient can go more than one medications and a lot of medicine. And let me tell you, let me warning you that narcotic is not a treatment of fibromyalgia. Now, once patients, first of all, it will not help fibromyalgia patient. Second, it can cause more addictions and dependence. Third, it can cause more pain later on. We call it morphine-induced hyperalgesia. So it's not a treatment of fibromyalgia. So don't try to be having like narcotic for fibromyalgia patient. Duloxetin, again, 60 milligram, you can start 30 milligram. It's approved for major depression, diabetic neuropathy, fibromyalgia, osteoarthritis, and it is working and can be added to other medication like Lyrica. Milnasopran, also it works through fatigue and, and help norepinephrine area, and you can add it to Lyrica also. So there is some articles I did long time ago. In the beginning, they said, give Lyrica two times a day. Give it high dose, 150 milligram twice a day. I said, no way. Inability of most, I told you, patients are sensitive to medicine. I have an abstract in EULAR, and so the inability of most United States patients to tolerate recommended dose of pregabalin, 150 milligram twice a day. First of all, I give Lyrica or pregabalin only at night. I like the patient to have less pain, maybe around 7 p.m., less pain, sleep well, so I can change the lifestyle, the exercising next day, and go back to their normal life. So, and we have deficiency of vitamin D can cause a problem. It's not proven yet that vitamin D, but it, honestly, when you replace vitamin D, a lot of pain will be less, fatigue will be less. So something, even in Southern California, the sunny state, we have patient has low vitamin D. So, and then, uh, like I did another one, abstracts before, saying that uh, do you treat with one drug or two drugs? And I found that you have sometimes combination therapy, more than one medication works, like Lyrica and Sampalta or Lyrica and Savala. So something like that may work. So that's basically, you, you do not need to be one drug. Again, I told you, everyone is different. So, uh, and then... One of the things that I start long time ago in my practice called low-dose naltrexone, LDN, in the team five miles. And this is abstract, was done in 2013, and I published this article after that, and very interesting. I found that low-dose naltrexone, very low-dose. Naltrexone is a drug, anti-narcotic, by the way. And then if I give it in a very low dose, 4.5 milligram or 3 milligram, that's completely different. It's highly tolerable, safe, inexpensive, compounding drug here, make it around $30, $40 per month. And basically, this drug, it helps the pain and helps the fatigue. 
and help the inflammation down because works through cytokines of inflammation in the body. And we give it not only for that. I give it for fatigue. I give it for post-COVID syndrome. I give it for patient who have MS fatigue, Jogren syndrome fatigue, autoimmune thyroid disease fatigue, all these things, it make a difference. So Ludus naltroxone, it works through gil gilial cells in the brain and work basically uh, microglia cells and works through a lot of neurotransmitters. I told you the disease is a neurotransmitter disease. It works in the nerve ending chemicals. So that's work. So it came to I my idea at that time. And I'm the first one who started it actually a lot in the United States, long time ago. At the same time, I have my publication, UC San Francisco has another articles. But it came, one of my patients teach me about it. And I told you, my patient is my doctors, actually, my, my actually my teachers. And I feel like they teach me that. She came one time tell me, Dr. Matthias, I'm fed up with all medication for my I can't take anyone. Can you give me an altroxone? That's a long time ago. That's maybe around. Um, like 2009 or something. Said, what is naltrexone? So she, I, she gave me an article. I started reading it. I found what? Wow, this stuff may work. So, so I started, let's try it. So I called the pharmacist who, who knows how to do it. And he did that and compounding and I give it to patients. And since that time, I found, wow. Then I start having this. So I start to have more patients. Now I have 500 patients on it. And then I, it works. And patient happy about it and makes him even losing weight. And there is a drug for weight loss from naltroxone called Contrave. And this drug, naltroxone, it, uh, and, and it decreases uh, the cra craving to food and, and adding that uh, wolbuterin is called Contrave. But it works through a lot of areas. And I like the drug. And I it was long time ago. So let me tell you, this patient who told me about long time, she helped a lot of my patient. And by publishing this, we help a lot of people all over the world. Because this was the first publications about it. So, and then we did an article about effective interdisciplinary approach, like which is the teamwork between a physical therapist, massagers, a chiropractor, acupuncture, yoga, cognitive behavior psychologist, and a doctor can make a big difference. And we did this article in Casa Colina, and I think it was an American College of Rheumatology meeting abstract. Then I did something very interesting. I found a patient who come to me with severe neuropathy. They have something different. They are different than other fibromyalgia. So they did the biopsy, and I found they have uh, like some called small fiber neuropathy, which mean what? The big nerve is okay, but the small nerve will go into the skin. The size is supposed to be once 10 millimeters. This go down to one millimeters or two millimeters, and they have severe pain. So I said, okay, what should I do with them? I give them Larica, I give them pain medicine, nothing worked. So let's do something different. So we said, how about we give them IVIG, immune globulins, which is with expensive infusion. And after I did that, I have some patients. I did, let me do so after six months. Patient felt well, less fatigue. I even have patient in Utah. She comes like to me, visits, and I give it, give the IVIG for her. And then basically she has uh, like these patients. After I did six months of infusion, I did the biopsy and it regained the nerve back. So feel well, less pain problem, and regain the nerve back. And that's the biopsy before, has no nerve here, you see? Here, start nerve growing back again here, and this is after infusion of six months. Very interesting, but not for everyone. This for patients of small fiber neuropathy. Should rheumatologists treat fibromyalgia? Yes. Some rheumatologists don't like to see fibromyalgia. That's a problem. Oh, it's a waste of time, complainers, I don't have time for them. That's not right. Why rheumatologists? Because basically, most of this fibromyalgia, they can come with different diagnoses. So I have to find out if they have lupus, rheumatoid, another disease. That's an important thing. Maybe development of, of a certain disease. And we have a beautiful article, three articles about something called inflammatory fibromyalgia, which one of the subcategory. And that's, there is some fibromyalgia patient has high inflammatory markers. That's not common fibromyalgia. And we, if we dig in or wait some time, they may develop another disease. So rheumatologists should diagnose, should take care of this patient. And it's a leadership in fibromyalgia. We have a lot of publication about it. And we need to educate like patients. So for that, one of the things that we do uh, currently in our office, we have a clinical trial for fibromyalgia, which is 
cognitive behavior therapy. I think I had a slide here, but didn't show. And this actually very interesting. Like I long time ago, I said we have to have a cognitive behavior therapy, a good psychologist who take care of these patients and helping them to relax, helping them to 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 educate them how to 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 cope with life. And if like we have a study now, and FDA has a wonderful study, and I have it in my office open. If anyone willing to, to go in the trial, and and the trial is basically they did an app, and this app patient go in it every day and listen to some videos and stretching exercise and see how the pain level. I think that will make a difference, and I think this this one day will be easy. Could can be done in patient home, no medication involved, just an app for cognitive behavior therapy. So at the end, fibromyalgia. Fibromyalgia is a common. It's like I told you, 8%, but go up to 20%. It's, it's a very difficult disease. Not every patient is the same, and that's a problem. And it's difficult diagnosis, delay diagnosis. Patient suffering, even young age, start at young age sometimes. So as teenagers, fibromyalgia is very common. Future research need to see complexity of the disease. Is it inflammatory? Some of them. It is why different patients and different disease. Is there a subtype category need management? The the three medications of, of fibromyalgia we have is not enough. Is this is not helping us a lot? But changing lifestyle is the most important way. I gonna tell you something. I have patients, a lot of patient remission. Remission mean what? Good days more than bad days. If I can be, make patient back to work in a good days very well and function better, I can I made a difference. And that can happen if patient gonna help me and changing lifestyle. So we assess the patient, not the pain. We treat the patient as a whole, not the pain itself. And that's an important about fibromyalgia. Lady Gaga made a great things for us. She make awareness of fibromyalgia. And that's make it like she has severe five miles, but at the same time, she's fight it and she's continue performing. That's our office. And I'm glad to answer any question. Thank you very much for organization. Wow. 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 You never cease to amaze me, Dr. Matias. It is amazing to see so many comments, so many people talking and thanking you for just acknowledging the patient, uh, being a rheumatologist, acknowledging the patient, ensuring that, you know, there's hope because a lot of times some rheumatologists don't want to see fibromyalgia patients and also just a different variety of you know, um, cat subcategories that you were talking about that a lot of people haven't heard about. And it is so interesting because for a long time, Melissa and I have been talking about everyone's so different. Everyone is so unique and you emphasize that. And I love the last slide of let's assess and treat the patient, not just the pain. Um, it, we have a lot of questions, uh, but I wanted to highlight that because acknowledging the patient um, is a huge thing, especially for us patients. We want to be heard. We are more than just our pain. We are more, it is fibromyalgia is more than just in our head. And, you know, just everything, all your research um, that you've done. Um, we do have a booth uh, for your practice um, here so people can go and visit it. They have your um, a couple of videos, the LDN video um, from the YouTube that we got. So we have a lot of uh, information on there about the practice. Uh, before we go to the questions, I do want to say that if you do want to sign up for the cognitive study that you're doing, um, uh, we will have, you know, in the booth, we can probably put the information on there. I know I'm going to go and sign up. <laughs> And I'll see if I can convince the rest of my family members, because I do think that we are the magic patients, as you called us, you know, it's, it's about us taking initiative. And um, if that doesn't empower us, I don't know what will. Um, and then um, go ahead, Melissa, if we could go through some of the questions. 
Yeah, it was sharing all the praise. So thank you for a wonderful presentation. You're seeing all these comments come in. Thank you for thanking you for the presentation, um, asking different questions. So actually, this one question is also important in case anyone catches it. Where are, is your practice? Yes, my practice in Covina and 500 West San Bernardino Road in Covina, California. And um, yeah, we're glad to see anyone and um, also to help anytime. Yes, and in his booth, you will find also, we'll add the link to the to his website. Um, you, you will see all the information on there with the address. And I'm looking for, there's a lot of comments in here. So I'm trying to find you some questions here. I know there's a lot of questions about LDN um, and diff, I guess just even working with, okay, here's a great one from Katie. How can we get more information like this to our primary care doctors? Um, I'm, I'm assuming Katie, were you referring you know, to- the education is important. I think yeah. if Education you is were important looking, for that. yes, if you were looking at some of the slides, so one of the things that I did is, you know, wrote down a couple of notes. Um, in this video, you you will be able to watch again. But if you capture a couple of notes from like what LDN is, how it can help you, you the different, um, you know, treatments that are out there, uh, go ahead and go to your doctor and then um, go over them and ask them the question. So prepare before you go to your visit and ask them, what is this? Can I use Cymbalta? Would this be good for me? Should I, you know, can I use LDN? Can I use this? Um, these are the best ways for you to um, get the treatment that you know, was, is going to help you individually. So I think reviewing the notes, uh, writing down notes, reviewing the video, and then asking the questions to your provider would, would be beneficial. Yeah, definitely. Some, were, some people were asking about relief for pain when they sleep. Yes. Uh, you know, I thought Lerica will help at night very well. We can take muscle relaxants will work very well too. Especially young patients can take Flexrel, Cyclobenazepren, and the elderly you can't give that, so you can give Baclofen, something, or Tizenidine. So it depends on age, so you'll not fall down. And that helps. Sometimes you need to get certain pain medicines, just simple Motrin, Aleve, Advil, Tylenol is fine to help sometimes. But Lyrica is the main central pain syndrome, so it helps when you take it at night to help you to sleep. The main reason of we give Lyrica to help less pain so you can sleep, so you wake up refreshed in the morning. And that's why. I recommend it taking it around 7 p.m. and not later, so you cannot be groggy in the morning. And I think it's a great relief of pain. Well, we appreciate this information. And one of the questions too is just working properly and effectively with physicians. So is there anything that patients can do to make sure they're getting the most out of the appointments with someone like yourself or how they can prepare for an appointment with you if they're diagnosed with fibromyalgia? You know, first patient has to be educated. That's what's, that's why I say education is read about it. Very important. Read very, you are a big advocacy for yourself. You have to understand sometimes you go to the doctor 15 minutes is not enough to, to like for, for him to find everything, but you are the one who gets to take care of yourself and to be advocacy for yourself, read, prepare, and you go discuss with doctors. We don't enforce him to do that, but just the point is guide, he will give you the guidance. At least you open the things that doctors, I read about that. I, how about, can we talk about the diet today? Can we see like physical therapy program? Can we do anything? What about medication? Can we change dosing to lower dose? So something like that is important for patient to be like a very important role in management. And that's a very important. Patients, when educated patient makes easy for doctors and for him to be good health. Well, it's an important point for just preparing and talking. Like, do you recommend one subject area? Like, how should a how should a patient choose? Like, there's so many symptoms going on, correct? So should they come maybe with a top priority list or how should they approach it? You know, when you discuss that, all these symptoms is one thing. I always say that. Fibromyalgia is like uh, baskets. 
You have everything in one thing. So, and when you do well, everything will do well, which is, this is very important. So the IPS was in interstitial types with, with bladder problem, with headache, with TMJ, with all these things can be corrected if you sleep well at night, if you exercise, walk in the morning, if you eat healthy, can help all, all these aspects. So it is one thing. So don't think that your headache is different than your gut, gut problem, is different than the neuropathies that you have, the numbness that you have. It's all one problem. Because you don't sleep, it's imagine somebody, a car, you driving from here to New York without stopping. The car would stop and by itself and be... That's exactly our patients not sleeping. They don't go to deep sleep. So their life going on and on and on without sleeping. So basic tired, fatigue, pain, and that's the problem. So you have to understand that's what you why targeting sleeping is the most important things. Drink something to calm you down. Take melatonin. Try to relax yourself. Read something relaxing, listen to music. So, and maybe take lyrica. You have to work in all, as walking daily is an essential. The day you are not walking, you get more pain. So balance your life, understand your body. If you don't understand, I know that. My patient who do go remission, they know very well their body. That's what hurt me and I'm not doing this. So say that somebody is stressing you, you know how to relax yourself. You don't need to be around too much or you have to back up yourself. So some places get you more tired. So you have to under, if you do extra, like you get guests a lot of like party 30 people serving them and you end up to be tired. You under, you have to know this is, you cannot do that. You may need a helper. If you want to clean the home, you can do it all in one day. You may do it in divided. And, and that is how it will be. Understanding your own body make a difference. And that's that's the key of fibromyalgia. I love all those tips. You know, I think, you know, I loved the, the example that you gave about the car that doesn't stop. You know, that's sometimes how my brain works. So I have to try and calm myself down at night take those breathing techniques. Yesterday, there was a, I think he's a, he's a provider, Ben, he was talking about, he made us all take a deep breath. And I think we take these breathing treatments for granted, the relaxing, the taking time off for ourselves. So knowing your body, I think is very important. You also mentioned about vitamin D and supplements. So I know for me, um, one thing that I've noticed is for vitamin D deficiency, my pains are um, stronger and I don't sleep well. So for me, I have been on a very strict, um, you know, making sure that I monitor my vitamin D deficiency because I was just diagnosed with hyperparathyroidism, which is what's causing that. So it's very important to know your numbers, to know your body and to see how you can help yourself. Um, I think uh, patient empowerment is the key. So I love the fact that you mentioned that the patient has to know their body and see what works and what doesn't work for them. So um, the car analogy, yeah, I see it on the comments. Other people are agree agreeing uh, with us. Um, and I don't know if there's any other questions, Melissa, I don't see um, questions, but if it's in, if, I think people are like just commenting about like different treatments, do different things, um, reactions that they got with the treatments that they got, which is very, very important because we are all different, right? And if some treatments work for me, they might not work for you. So I love that we're all sharing that. So we are learning from each other. Um, I don't see any other questions that are specific. Um, I, I just see a lot of people actually talking about, you know, it's sad that a two-year-old can have fibromyalgia. I can tell you I was diagnosed in 2018. Uh, however, um, I remember having a lot of pain when I was growing up, like at the age of 14, 15, probably around the hormone years, um, I couldn't walk at times. And I never knew why. I used to be very athletic, I, th I used to always think it's because I was playing soccer and I was very fatigued because of that or overworking my muscles. But now if I'm looking back, I probably <laughs> had these issues since then. Um, 
I don't know. I don't yes. think well, that. I mean, there's a lot of praise coming in with the comments and commentary. And I, I do want to honor your time uh, for Dr. Matias. Uh, is there any closing remarks that you would like to leave us with at the fibromyalgia conference here, international conference? Yes, I'm, I'm very proud of this conference international. We have to get together because maybe in the United States, we have more addressing the disease more and doctors more aware of it. And we have centers of fibromyalgia. Some other country, I do a lot of charities. Actually, I'm going next in two weeks to do some seeing patients in, in Egypt. And, and to, I'm going to go to Bolivia and I go to a lot of places. And let me tell you, fibromyalgia is not addressed a lot in other countries. And that's a problem. And they're treating them as different disease, rheumatoid. And I got a lot of consult from people overseas. And, and they're taking medication for rheumatoid. And all what they have is fibromyalgia. And that's a problem. So it's a common disease. It's it's a very, it's important to know that uh, that treatment, it can be, you can do well. If you fight it early, don't leave, leave yourself for a long time without treatment. Start exercising, pro very simple. It not cost you a lot. Exercising problem, changing lifestyle, losing weight, eating healthy, we have a strict life. We call it like an army style. I always tell my patient, wake up certain time, eat. That's my time for even anything happen in the wallet. That's my time to walk around the home. We don't need to do more than walking, stretching, try to relax yourself, try to sleep well at night, and that will change your life. And you may not need a lot of medicine, and you may not need medication even. And that's the simple things. Correct your minerals, have your way to eat well. And it, it starts a long time ago from your teenagers. You, some people get headache, abdominal pain, kids doesn't want to go to school a lot. They have fibromyalgia. It's a genetics. I see the mom, the granddaughters and daughters all in one room sometime come to me, same disease. And if you have it, please don't mention it a lot or don't talk a lot around your kids about it because they will actually you will they will get the same thing if you don't if you keep you have to fight it well help with your home definitely but at the same time do not be a complainers a lot around, around them because you're going to be the same later on so please try to fight it with your husband talking to, like helping you and everything but try not to like basically to be like negative you have to be positive you have to fight it it's a tough things but it can be done i have i told you i have maybe 50 percent of my patient in complete remission and they come to me every six months doing great it's a treatable, actually. It was it was it was a way if it done right, and and basically it's it's important to understand it and fight it, and we can do it. We can do it together. I love it. We can do it. It's treatable, and let's continue to think positive. There is hope. We are going to wrap this up. Thank you again, Thank Dr. You. Sammy Matias, for being here and for. Um, the presentation and Thank congratulations you. again Thank on you for your, that. I love it. <laughs> yes, we will come by your office you. and Thank present you. it to you. Yes. Thank you so Thank much. You. So Thank everybody you. in this main stage, yes, there's a booth set up so you can follow the links and learn about all the great research that he's done. I was super impressed to learn about the LDN research and then the CBT research. Um, so we're excited for that. And we're going to stop the broadcast shortly so that we can get the next presenter prepared. Dr. Tracy Roberts Ramirez will join us on stage shortly. So stay here in the fibro stage, you know, maybe Thank just you. stand up, do a little bit of stretching and then we'll be right back.